is El Sambri. <laughs> um, welcome back to my channel. It is the Camp NaNoWriMo prep vlog. So um, for the next couple weeks, I'm gonna be working on prepping for Camp NaNo. I'm planning to do an adult horror thriller and draft that next month in April. And so in these next few weeks, I'm focusing basically on getting all of my plotting and my prep work done so that I can just draft in April. Um, so I will introduce you to my um, story idea. Um, I was going to do a separate video, but I was like, ah, I don't have enough content for that. So I'll just introduce it to you here. So I'm going to be working on an adult horror thriller. Um, it is essentially about um, startup culture, uh, toxic workplace culture, um, discrimination in the workplace, um, all wrapped together in like a lovely horror thriller package. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do two perspectives. I'm gonna do one is a woman who has participated in toxic work culture and she's trying to turn over a new leaf um, getting started at this uh, Athletica, a yoga athletica company. Um, because some things went down at her old workplace that were not good and she's just trying to turn over a new leaf and become a different sort of person. And then the second point of view is the girl, uh, or the woman I guess, from <laughs> from uh, the old workplace. And she was actually like, whatever happened between her and that other woman is the reason why she doesn't even work in that industry anymore. She is living at home. Um, she's working kind of just food service jobs. She feels super disillusioned with the industry and she's having a really difficult time. And there's going to be this whole yoga retreat that the company puts on. And so the first woman kind of ends up lapsing into her old habits to get on that retreat, on that company retreat. And then the other woman, wins a giveaway like wins a ticket to go on the retreat because they invite a bunch of their customers to come on it with them and so now they're both on this retreat having that history with each other plus a bunch of other stuff um and it's gonna be like an isolation thriller trope kind of thing so they're going to be uh stuck in the retreat together there's not gonna be a way out and stuff is gonna happen originally the way I was thinking of this was that it would be like classic isolation thriller thing like that one person would die and then or they would be murdered and then it'd be like who's the murderer and like all this stuff would happen and I would put a really like horror vibe on it um so that's why I'm calling it a horror thriller because it's playing with thriller tropes and like the feel of a thriller but it's gonna have a very horror atmosphere it's gonna be really heavy on dread and that sort of thing um, but then <laughs> um, I read Writing in the Dark by Tim Wagner. That's a craft book. I'll link over here. It was part of the uh, Laura Wrights' Let's Talk Craft Book Club. Um, so that was the pick and I was a guest on there as well. And so after reading that, like he had talked about like not like turning a trope on its head and like adding your own original spin to it and making it something different. And I just like, I was thinking about it last night and I just thought, I just like, I was thinking about it in my head and thinking about like the whole, like they go there and the person gets murdered and it's like, oh my God, someone is murdering us and like doing all that stuff. And I just like, I feel like it's a trope for a reason because people like reading that and I really love reading isolation thrillers. I think that's why I love Ruth Ware as an author so much because I she does so many isolation thrillers and I just like them and I think they're fun. But I feel like what thriller writers will do is that they'll put a really like cool twist on it, like a reveal twist, and that's kind of how they freshen up the trope. And for me, I just feel like the reveal twist is not like I don't know maybe it's just because I don't have anything in mind now but it doesn't really feel like going into it that's my strength with this and I'm starting to wonder how I can change the trope itself how I can still get that feeling of isolation and terror and dread and fear but could I do it without killing anyone because I think that might be interesting um because I think like the whole crux, like there's always like, and then there was a murder and that's like why you get interested in it. But I wondered 
what sort of vibe I could create, like what sort of dread and like hopelessness and terror I could create without ever actually killing someone and with that and like how that might be interesting. So that's kind of where I'm at now, which is kind of makes it difficult to sit down and like plot this because now I'm at this point where I'm like, oh, I like kind of don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> But I'll figure something out. I do want this to be like very very fast paced Which is why I'm trying to make it a short word count So 60,000 words is the word count that I'm aiming for because I want it to be like very quick and fast paced I do not want to make a long book with this one. I just don't want to deal with that I want it to be like quite fast paced. I don't know. I might almost even like Be better if I went for a 50k word count and then just expand it. But anyway, we'll see what I feel like um, because I think ultimately it'd probably be good if it was 70k, but I know I can add words so easily, so I'm afraid of like accidentally making it too long. But anyways, so that's my plan and I just gotta, so today I think what I'm gonna try and work on is I'm gonna work on the character sheets and start there because I have a pretty firm grasp on my two POV characters. Um, I had wanted to do other POVs, but I wanted to do other POVs when I thought a bunch of people were going to get killed because then it was going to be their POV before they got killed. But now it's kind of like, well, that might not be what I'm doing. So I don't know. I'm just going to start with the character sheets and see how it goes. But I think I just like, I don't want to do the proper isolation thriller trope. I really want to do something different. So I got to figure out that. Got to figure that out. Yeah. Welcome to the vlog. <laughs> See me when you talk, I don't know what to say Hello, it is the next day. So, what I've done so far today, and I think this is all I'm going to do for today. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, I have the first act. I did the plotting the save the cat beats. So I think my focus for this week is to get all the save the cat beats done, just like the general beats, and then um, get as much of like the character stuff done as I can. Um, so yeah, so I've done some of the character stuff. I've done the my character sheet for the two main POVs. I think I'm going to stick with those two I don't know that I'm going to do other POVs, um, so I think I'm going to stick with those two. I also figured out what I was going to do to, like, try and, like, make this more <laughs> original, I guess. Different than, like, the standard isolation trope thing. And so it is kind of a more supernatural sort of twist, which I'm like... Well, I proved to myself I couldn't just do something without adding in something supernatural. Um, and so I think that works better. I think that also just works better for me and my brand. Um, it's going to rely a lot on execution because it's the sort of thing where to pitch it, it kind of sounds like not good. <laughs> I don't know. I pitched it to my boyfriend. He was like, oh, I thought it sounded good. So anyway... Um, so it's going to really hinge on me being really good about like pushing feeling of dread and that sort of thing. But I have changed my mind and people will die. So <laughs> that's going to be different. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I want to do multi POVs when people die. Anyway, I'll figure it out. So I've gotten those two character sheets and then there was like, I'm realizing how many characters I've put in this because... It's basically like a whole social media team and then influencers and then like fans of the brand who go on this trip. And so I kind of got to like, I've really only made a list of the social media team and the influencers, but now I'm realizing, oh, there's got to be other like fan winners other than just the one girl because that would be so awkward for her like they've got to pick more fans so then i gotta add those guys in and then it's like oh my gosh it's like too many people <laughs> involved so i'm trying to think if there's a way 
I think I'll have to revisit this and I'll have to strip back some of the amount of people that I've put in here because it might be too many. But anyway, that's kind of what I'm working on. So I'm plotting this for two weeks. So yeah, so this first week, I just want to get the general Save the Cat beats done and I want to get all my character work done so that I know what every character, like what their goal or their whatever, what their function in the story is. I also really have to think about character names because I've been calling my characters girl one and girl two and I just like I need to give people names at some point so I've also got to figure that out um but I feel like I'm good I'm doing well I feel like I'm on track and so that's really good and I yeah I have a whole week to do these save the cat beat things and I think I'm gonna stop working for today I don't know what I'm gonna do with my time actually but I'll figure something out I guess very exciting unboxing for you. I got a very special package in the mail. It's an Ace of Spades promo box. If you don't know about Ace of Spades, um, it's by Frida Bigay Miede. It's coming out June 10. Okay, let me not. I'm pretty sure it's June 10th in the US and June 1st in the UK. Uh, Frida is awesome and I'm so excited for her book. It's Get Out Meets Gossip Girl and this is like the promo box. Um, so there we go and then open if you dare. Um, I'm so excited for this book. I already uh, pre-ordered my UK copy. I still have to pre-order my US copy um, but I'm so excited for it and look it's like a playing card. I love it. I love it. Okay so I'm gonna open it. Ah, look at how cool it is. Okay let's see inside. And here are the, oh, it's so cool. How do you play the game when the cards are stacked against you? So I'm so excited. Okay, there's a card deck, a deck of cards, which like me and my boyfriend play games all the time. So we're definitely going to use them. So cool. Let me see what the. F okay, so that was the Joker. You're like, do you care about. There we go. Fun. Oh, there is a. Uh... I wonder if there's anything on here. Open if you dare. And it's a one gigabyte zip drive. And then we have a lanyard that says Nivius Private Academy, which is the academy. It's set in a boarding school, so that's why. And then we have the school, um, what are they called? Like, 
not motto, things. Things that the school, I can't remember what the word is. Um, and then they have these like, that you could attach to the lanyard for each character. So you can like pretend to be them, like their school card. Um, so Devon Richards. And then some quotes that I assume is a quote from him. I go to school, I put on the costume the rich kids wear, and I pretend for a few hours. I love that. I'm so excited <laughs> about reading. Um, and then Chiamaka's quote is high school is like a kingdom in this kingdom the queen doesn't inherit the crown she destroys whoever she needs to get to the top i are it's gonna be so amazing like the gossip girl vibes oh my god this is so cute look at this peloton is that what it's called pennant there we go <laughs> it was like peloton <laughs> pennant there it is you scan the code and then you can access it on Neck Alley, which is so exciting. I'm really excited to read. Um, oh, and they have a little letter for you. And I assume a letter for you from uh, Headmaster Collins, um, who I assume is like the headmaster of the school in the book. And then... Here we go. And then there's a letter from the editor and all of that. So exciting. I love that. I love all, I just love confetti. Who doesn't love confetti? So very exciting. Very exciting. Super excited to read. Update. There was something on the flash drive is the teaser trailer, which was made by yours truly. So <laughs> uh, yeah, I had so much fun making that trailer. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. To Frida, I was like, I'll make it for free. And she was like, no, 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 let me pay you. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess. So, um, and I've made, uh, I think I, I made her another trailer and I've made one more trailer for another author. So that's been a fun thing. So yeah, so excited, so, ex so excited to read. I've got bad habits I'm trying to fix. You haven't even seen the half of it. I don't think you'd want to I distance myself so it doesn't hurt But I'm still in pain either way Don't know why you give me the time of day Hello! So, <laughs> it's almost the end of the week, it's Friday, and I have finished doing my general Save the Cat Beats. So here's here's the process, because I don't think I've outlined this. So I have my general Save the Cat Beats, and basically what I do is I'll write like a paragraph or a couple sentences or whatever of what's going to happen in each beat for the whole beat. And in this case, because I have two POVs, I'm doing it for each POV. Um, and then in the fun and games, I've just listed all the subplots and like what's supposed to happen in each subplot generally. Um, so I finished doing that on Thursday. So yesterday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I finished doing that. And then I started, basically I broke down all the Save the Cat beats. And then I broke down how many chapters will be in each beat. Um, so I use the percentage calculations to roughly figure that out. So like act one is 12,000 words. So if I do 2000 word chapters, I need roughly six chapters in that um, act, basically. So then I like, because I have two POVs, I was like, okay, this one, this one I'm doing, I'm just alternating them, uh, just for simplicity's sake, to be honest. <laughs> We'll see if that changes, but right now I'm just alternating them. Um, so I've done that. And then um, I've been writing like a one sentence thing about what happens in each chapter. Um, so like some like one sentence is discovery that blank was murdered. So like I don't have any details there. I'm just like, that's this is what happens. And I'm interspersing some like little social media beats because it's a uh, she works in social media so I thought that would be kind of fun um and so 
there's like um, a thing that's like Instagram post or like private Slack message or like something like that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the format I'm going with. I have come up with comps and I think I'm fine to share them because I don't, I think the way that I'm doing it is different enough that like, it's not going to matter if someone checks my comps, but I'm, it's like one by one by Ruth Ware meets us, Jordan Peele's us. So it's that combination. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about that. So that's where the like horror thriller mashup. I do really think of it as a horror thriller and I think that'll be a good way to market it as well. Um, and like as a break into adult, I think that would be something I would be interested in doing career wise, like having my adult work be like horror thrillers. Um, and then, you know, my young adult work being like fantasy and horror dark fantasy slash horror like the line of that the blurred line between horror and dark fantasy <laughs> being my young adult stuff in general so that is the plan and those are my comps and so i've been doing these one sentence chapter descriptions i on yesterday i did the first act and today i've done basically up to the midpoint and so then tomorrow i'll finish off the rest of it and so then for I'll take a break on Sunday because that'll basically be my week done. So in the whole week, I would have plotted out basically what's going to happen in every chapter and all of, yeah, all of that stuff. So then next week, my whole thing will be breaking down each chapter into like very specific component points. Um, and yeah, I think that's basically going to be it. I'm not going to do a pitch letter or a synopsis this time um for one i won't need a synopsis for submission anyway so i don't really see the point in writing the synopsis i'll just do my detailed chapter outline i do sometimes like to write synopses sorry my phone but i don't i don't think i need it in this case um the pitch letter i think it'll be better if i write it after i've written the book um because I think I'll have a better idea of how to pitch it in that case. Um, but yeah, I do have those comps for pitching. Um, and then, yeah, so that's kind of my plan. Things are moving along swimmingly. Um, I always hit this point where I start to panic and I'm like, is my idea original enough? Is it like commercial enough? Is it snappy enough? Um, but I think this will work. I think a lot of this will be the writing. I think the writing will really solidify this and I'll see how the writing comes out. Um, I've also got to like drill down. I want to do some bullet points of like how each POV character's voice sounds because the thing is the voices have to sound very different. Um, I don't want it to be that like because <laughs> another thing I decided I was originally going to write this book in third person. Um, and then I decided that I would rather, this was when I thought I was going to do all sorts of POVs, but I have so many characters, I don't want to do too many POV things. And so I decided that it would be better to do first person for the two POV characters. And if I'm doing first person, then they have to be very distinct. But I don't know, I'm going to look up and I'm going to see... I'm going to check in on a bunch of thrillers and I'm going to see what they do. And if they all do close third person, then maybe I'll just do close third person, but... I don't know. We'll see. See me look at you, you always look away. I'm going down that road to the end, I say. See me look at you, you always look away. I'm going down that road to the end, I say. See me look at you, you always look away. I'm going down that road to the end, I say. See me look at you. you
remember if I said this before, but I finished doing my single chapter summaries. So the goal of this week is to flesh out like exactly what's going to happen in each chapter so that when I sit down to write, I know exactly what I'm writing and I can just zip zip through because that's like I use Crick's, <laughs> Crick, Chris Fox's um, 5,000 words per hour method. I'll link that book below as well. But the crux of the method is that you write down exactly what you're going to be writing so that when you go to write, you're not losing time thinking about what you're going to write. You're not losing time wondering what's going to come next. You can just like plow through it. And that's how I'm able to write a thousand words in 20 minutes um, because I do that method. Um, and so that's why I need those like detailed chapter things. But I ran into a problem. So because this is like, I'm doing this, I want it to be like a horror thriller. And so this is like for several reasons. For one, I think it would be fun. Um, but for two, I think in terms of commercial viability, sellability, which are things that I do think about with my writing in my books, not everyone does. Um, but to me, like thinking about commercialism, sellability and like mass appeal is important to me because um, it gives me comfort for selling and for feeling confident that someone will pick up the book. Um, and so uh, to me, like having something that can appeal to thriller fans and horror fans is ideal. Um, and that's kind of what I, where I want to work in the adult market. Um, and so uh, where was I going with this? Right. <laughs> so I just feel like there aren't enough juicy twists. And I don't know if it's just because I already wrote in twists, so I know what's going to happen, so it doesn't seem that juicy to me, but I just feel like I don't have very good twists in it. Um, so I can like plot out the first chapter, I mean the first act, I'm going to do all the like detailed chapter stuff today um, because it's like I can do all that, but I really need to think deeply on these twists because like I don't know if the twist at the end is strong enough. I don't know if I've like given people enough sort of like secrets to work with. Um, I don't know if that'll just come out in the writing, but I just feel like it's not up to snuff. Like, here's the thing. At the midpoint, I want people to be like, whoa. And at the end, I want people to be like, whoa. That's just like a thing with me in all of my books. Like I always do that. I'm obsessed with having twists for no reason. My debut is like that. The sequel is like that. Butcher Birds is like that. I've put that into my like fourth horror book um, that I'll talk about later when I'm like working on it, Bear Hunt. I'm just like, I'm obsessed with twists. I'm obsessed with them. And I just want good ones. And I don't think I have good ones for this book. So I feel like I just need to like think about it and like decide. And I want to talk it over with my friend, but if I talk it over with her, then she'll know the twists and I won't get her organic reaction when she reads and I want that. So that's something I gotta figure out how to do. So yeah. <laughs> Just me and you, we think 
done filming a thing. I don't think I can talk about it, so I won't. Um, but it was like a panel and I didn't know what authors were going to be there. And then when the panel opened, I was like, oh, it's so many authors that I like admire and like, <laughs> just like authors I admire. And I like really like, yeah, I, I can't think of any other word. Like that is the word. <laughs> um, and then I was just like, oh, am I here? And it was like weird, but I wasn't overtaken by imposter syndrome, which was good. Um, so the panel, yeah, it went well. My only thing is, this is a thing that I've noticed that I do like when I'm nervous, is I will talk and 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 I won't take a breath. And then I get to this point where I'm like kind of gasping while I say the word because I didn't take a breath. And then I'm like, now I'm so out of breath. And then it's just like really hard. And then I like take a breath finally. And it's like, <sighs> <laughs> so, that's like could be better um I you know I'm not baby's first panel even but I don't know I that's something I would like to improve on I need to learn to speak a little bit slower take pauses take time to catch my breath I don't have to get everything out at once, but this is something that I do when I'm nervous. So, and this is, it's just like hard because when I do new things like panels and that sort of thing with like strangers, like I guess essential, essential, not really strangers. Cause I knew like basically all of the authors I had heard of. Um, but it's just like, it's a new thing. And like, so then I'm like more likely to get like that excuse me versus like something like when I'm on like a live on YouTube with all of my friends I don't really feel like that and so I just speak normally and like if I do my own live or when I do videos or things like that um yeah we're work in progress we're not gonna beat ourselves up about it that's what we're not gonna do because I did my very best and I think I was able to get out some good speaking points, even though I may have been like gasping while I was saying it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really like happy about that. I put that down in my, um, I like keep track of like my wins during debut year and like positive things that happen every month so that I can put it in my journal at the end of the month because my memory is bad and I need to write it down. And so I like put that down because I like was like, on a panel with a lot of authors I admire and that was like important to me so that was really really nice um I did my makeup nice I did a full face look at me doing a full face I didn't use concealer I still don't know how to use concealer and I don't own any so I don't know um I look very shiny now but I wasn't so shiny before <laughs> uh writing wise what have I done um so this morning I worked on plotting out more of the adult horror stuff um, and I basically, um, am looking at my stuff. I plotted all the way to the midpoint, like the specific chapter stuff. And that was good. I had to look up some location things because, you know, a part of the book is happening in Thailand. And I went to Thailand for the first and only time, um, with my work. Um, they, I like won a work competition thing and got to go with them on like the free trip. It was super, super nice. Honestly, like one of the best experiences of my life, hands down. Um, so I'm really grateful I got to do that before being laid off. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, and so I wanted to look back to where we had stayed because it was really, really nice. Um, one of the places that we stayed. And so I wanted to, well, a lot of the places we stayed were really nice, but like this one in particular was very nice. And so I looked it up so that I could put it into the book. I won't call it the same thing probably. And then I wanted to look at all my stories so that I could like get a vibe for the setting and I like downloaded a bunch of them so that I can look back on the stories when I'm like trying to think of how to describe the place and like everything that's happening um and like it's good for me because it brings up memories like I remember being at dinner and like the tables were on like sand like just on the beach and like you know eating and like sticking my feet into the sand and like you know, like little sensations and stuff like that. So I've done that as well. Um, I'm behind on my knitting for today. I might just like break up, take a break from knitting today. I think I'm like, I, the knitting is I just do it when I watch YouTube videos, but like I do get tired sometimes. So I don't know. But then, yeah, it's just like I'm extra inhaling because I breathed. I was doing such poor breathing before. Um, but yeah. I look so yellow. I don't know why. There we go. I should have filmed it from this angle. I look much less yellow now. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go. It is March 26th, March 26th, yes. And we are at the end of the vlog. So I succeeded. Yesterday was Thursday, so it was a Thirsty Thursday with Kevin and Laura. They do that every Thursday. I'll have their channels linked below. Um, and so I was able to get the whole, not even the whole, <laughs> the whole rest of the second act from the midpoint. Um, to the beginning of the third act and also the third act done yesterday um, which is kind of wild but <laughs> the thing is when I had done my original save the cat beat plotting the thing is that in the fun and games I only really list the subplots so I don't really know in particular what's going to happen in those chapters yet and it takes a lot more planning so it took me like a whole day to do that whole first section of the first act but because the second part of the second act is things like dark night of the soul and the midpoint twist and like all that stuff it's like more specific events so when i had done my original save the cat beat plotting i had already put in those specific events and because i had gotten like brain waves i actually had a lot of information and so i didn't end up needing to think of as many new things when i was going to do the detailed chapter stuff um so that was really good in some places I had to, I think I had to add one chapter in just because I just needed the other point of view for it. And so my pacing should still be fine, um, but I just had to add one in just to like make it work. Um, but yeah, all my chapters are planned. I also went back to, I have a master list of every character or like every major slash major I don't know like there's major characters that are like POV characters and then there's major characters that are like technically minor characters but they have speaking parts and they have arcs and like that sort of thing so like all the characters that have an arc or have uh you know significance of any kind I made a master list of them and wrote them all down and I basically went and I fleshed it out so I wrote down kind of what their personality is like so it can help me with the voice and then I wrote down if they have like a secret because this is like horror thriller sort of thing and so a lot of people have secrets <laughs> that are gonna like come out throughout the book and so I got all that done and so now I'm like fully prepped for Nano. Uh, I'm feeling really good. I'm like, I had this thing in the past where I was like, uh, is this like good enough? And is it like gonna be boring? Like what have you? Um, I think because I'm so used to like 
the thing about like a thriller is like you have this massive twist and that sort of thing and I'm like trying to remember that like first and foremost this is an adult horror and I want it to also have like a bit of a thriller appeal but I don't need to go so buck wild on the twist but I also think there's enough like secrets that come out to really help with it but again I think most of this will come out when I'm doing the actual writing and like getting all the existential dread in there and things like that so I'm feeling good about it I feel like it's gonna be a good story we'll just have to see when I write it because excuse me I've plotted stories before and I've been like this is so good and like I think this is gonna be great and then I've started writing and I've been like uh so <laughs> We'll see what happens. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be doing Camp Nano next week. Next week will be April 1st. It'll already be Camp Nano time. Um, and my goal, I can't remember if I said in the beginning, but if you forgot, it's 60,000 words. So I'm gonna be doing 2,000 words per day, which for me is quite doable. But yeah, I'm excited to get into it. And now I have like a few days of like peace of like doing nothing <laughs> or not really doing nothing because I have stuff to do. I have like other publishing things to do um, for blogs and stuff like that. But, you know, otherwise kind of relaxing. Um, and yeah, just like trying to catch up on some reading. I read, that's over there. Um, I just finished reading Tomie, which I thought was Tomie, but I, it's Tomie. I, they also like they had the hiragana and like what little knowledge of hiragana I had I could still see <laughs> the pronunciation properly so that was fun um yeah it's pretty wild I also ordered six more volumes of Junji Ito manga um I just really like it it's just like horror manga but it's like they're so weird and like it's also like quite gruesome so if you are interested in like horror like I would say like check it out I think they're really cool Uzumaki is still my absolute favorite but like there are gruesome illustrations so if you don't want to see like stuff that you think is like gruesome and gross then probably you won't like it so but I really like them so I ordered way more <laughs> so that's exciting um but yeah, that's pretty much it for the week. I will also say I am linking below um, uh, AAPI resources. So if you've heard about the things that have gone on um, with Asian American, Pacific Islander, um, people in the US and honestly beyond the US, um, the violence against Asian people that has been happening, you know, since the coronavirus and the perpetuation of really negative stereotypes, negative stereotypes that honestly have a lot of them like the fetish fetishization of Asian women that has always existed um, coming up even more now um, and so I do have a resource link in my description if you want to educate yourself learn more about what's going on if you want to donate um, and if you want to find petitions to sign that sort of thing so I would encourage you to check out those links and to also like diversify your shelves um, with more Asian, Asian American and Pacific Islander authors. So um, that's really it for me. Next week, um, we'll be straight into Camp Nano. I'm going to be doing weekly Camp Nano vlogs. I don't think I'm going to be doing any other videos on top of that, but we'll see. You know, I, I always reserve the right to change my mind, but I will 100% be doing weekly Camp Nano vlogs. So look forward to that. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and please comment um, what you're working on for Nano, um, what your plans are. If you made a video to talk about what you're doing for Nano, like for sure, link that in the comments. Um, I'd love to hear what you are working on. And thank you so much for watching and happy camp nanoing if you're camp nanoing and otherwise be as you are. <laughs> Bye!